Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. We're still uh, kind of recovering from PowerCon, but we're gonna talk about the comic book industry and all these uh, crazy rumors around Valiant Comics apparently, uh, you know, possibly getting sold off. And uh, we're talking about, you know, the major shakeup with uh, DC Comics that some people uh, outside of YouTube are saying that they think that DC might just ditch monthly books completely. Hmm. Hmm. Imagine that. And uh, the fact that, you know, DC dropped comics from its uh, URL, which some people, you know, did point out, Detective Comics Comics doesn't make sense. But we're going to talk about uh, Valiant and how I believe they should bring Jim Shooter back as a consultant. If not with Valiant, than at Marvel or someplace because Jim Shooter probably could course correct the mainstream comic book industry pretty damn quick if he was interested in doing it. In fact, getting money for quality comics is very easy today as long as you're giving consumers what they want. Look at crowdfunding. I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Speaking of fishing, I have to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Fishing Clash. Fishing Clash is a free multiplayer fishing game chosen by millions of anglers that brings fishing and life together. Yeah, I know you guys don't like sponsored posts all that much, but sponsorships help keep us bringing you more daily content, so please consider checking out the app if you're a fishing fan. If you're willing to give it a try, use our gift code CLOWNFISH, that's CLOWNFISH, to get a special reward for a total value of 20 bucks. This is available for new players only. With this gift code, you'll get a three-star rod, one mythical lure, it's a dolphin fish. I ruined that for you. 50 luck power-ups and 30 weight power-ups to help you catch bigger fish. Here's how to redeem your code. It's as easy as one, two, three. First, open the settings on the app, then click on gift codes, and then enter the code. Again, that code is clownfish. I wonder why, I wonder why. Anyway, let's do some fishing. You know, I haven't gone fishing in years, but I used to fish with my grandfather and my stepdad. I always wound up throwing the fish back because I didn't have the guts to, to gut it. Like, I didn't want to gut a fish. Uh, my wife would be very proud, though. Uh, you don't have to gut a virtual fish, so there's a bonus. So let's cast boss. Wait, boss fight? God, it's got like 19,000, 18,000 hit points. They've got hit points. The fish have hit points. This is like, it's like an RPG and I'm not tapping fast enough. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it. I don't know if I nice one. I got a shark. I got a shark. I got a nosy shark. So fishing clash lets you travel all around the world and fish in different locations and fish from a shore or a boat on the go with a device in your pocket. You can upgrade your rods and lures to compete with other fishers in order to catch the biggest fish and upgrade your skills for even more advanced fishing. Oh, there are weekly competitions too. Maybe you can master the bass. Master the bass, see what I did there? I don't know. Anyway, you create your own clan, play with your friends and family, and can compete with other players. That's right, a fishing clan. Uh, it's a thing, it's a thing. Again, use our gift code CLOWNFISH to get that special reward to start fishing from your phone. Again, thanks to Fishing Clash. Now let's get back to the video. All right, guys, we are back. Let's talk about comic books. Let's talk about what's going on at Valiant uh, first. A couple days ago, and I gotta give a hat tip to CCG for sending this over. A couple days ago, Bleeding Cool reported that uh, there are a bunch of layoffs, layoffs and resignations uh, going on at Valiant. Of course, Valiant is a comic book company founded in the 90s by the legendary Jim Shooter. Jim Shooter, who was the uh, EIC of Marvel during one of their most successful eras. Jim Shooter is the name I came to associate most closely with uh, Marvel Comics growing up. Jim Shooter is from Pittsburgh. A lot of hard asses in Pittsburgh. A lot of hard asses in uh, uh, Pittsburgh who love comics, right? But uh, Jim Shooter, I think, would absolutely be able to write the ship at Valiant if given the chance. But I, I don't know what's going on here. They're apparently going to sell the company off. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, layoffs and resignations reported at Valiant. The future is uncertain. Of course, current year Valiant Comics is just, I don't even know what the hell it is anymore. I, I love Valiant Comics back in the 90s. Harbinger and, and uh, you know, Turok Dinosaur Hunter and um, Magnus Robot Fighter and all these great, great comics that really felt like 
early 80s Marvel stuff, but in the 90s. And I remember a lot of people when those comics came out were kind of like, oh, this art's really dated. It doesn't look like Todd McFarlane. But no, I, I love those comics. I thought they were great. And again, that was Jim Shooter. That's what Jim Shooter could do. And we needed Jim Shooter to try to save comics. Uh, there is significant concern within the comic book industry tonight. You could just end it there, Rich. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that because, again, we have uh valerie d'arazio talking about what happens when dc stops publishing books but we'll, we'll continue talking about valiant uh over the status of new york-based comic book publisher valiant entertainment uh in recent weeks there's been concern expressed regarding the timeliness of payments to freelance comic book creators but that sadly is not a unique issue among some comic book publishers uh that's actually I'm going to tell you the truth as someone who worked as a freelance comic book creator for a number of years. When the payments start coming later and later, or when they, God forbid, stop coming at all, that is a sign that this company is in trouble, that they're going to go, uh, they're going to go belly up uh, soon. Sometimes soon is relative. Uh, I, you know, I did a lot of work. I, I talked about this with IDW and they were having financial problems going back to, 2014, 2015. And I think that's back when they were starting to, to funnel a bunch of money into Hollywood stuff. But I know it took me to get paid for some, the last couple of covers I did for them, it took me like three or four months to get paid. And at the time I had an agent, we had the agent trying to get me paid and they weren't even responding to him. It was crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, if you're not getting paid, in a, a decent amount of time, that decent amount of time, I think, for a publisher is 30 to 45 days. If you're not getting paid from a major publisher for more than like 45 days, uh, there, there are potentially problems. There's a cash flow problem. Valiant publisher Fred Pierce's Facebook status reads, worked at Valiant, past tense. He worked at Valiant as the director and VP of manufacturing and operations from 1990 to 94 with COO and president at Wizard from 94 to 2008 and publisher of Valiant from 2011 to the present. Valiant Entertainment senior editor uh, Lisa Hawkins joined Valiant in 2018, was promoted in 2020, former senior editor at Valiant. Valiant sales communication coordinator Cody White, who only joined in April of this year, has updated his status, former sales communication coordinator. Hmm... These are the only current employees we can find who have updated their public employment status. Of course, if you're a freelancer, you're probably working for multiple companies on multiple projects or, you know, whatever. You might have an NDA. You're not allowed to talk about it. As it stands, no one is responding to inquiries publicly. And while we haven't been able to speak to everyone, Bling Cool has, as of yet, been able to identify anyone at Valiant who has not been laid off or not resigned. Wait, run this by me again? Bleeding Cool has, as of yet, been unable to identify anyone at Valiant who has not been laid off or not resigned. Oh, Valiant Entertainment as a publisher has also not returned emails sent earlier today, but we're not sure who would be left around to do so. Well, maybe they stopped paying the uh, the internet hosting bill. Maybe they don't have email anymore. Maybe they're not paying Google anymore. Uh, Valiant was founded in 89 by Jim Shooter, who actually could run this shit. Um, they had uh, they filed for bankruptcy. Lots, lots and lots of uh, incarnations of Valiant, Acclaim Comics, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the company was restarted by, I am going to attempt to pronounce his name, Dinesh uh, Sham Dasani and Jason Kathari in 2005. Again, they wanted to do Hollywood stuff. Uh, as I understand it, they were all about the Hollywood. They revived the non-gold key titles and introduced new ones like Faith, Divinity Rapture, and Punk Mamba. I think Faith is the one, wasn't it? The heavyset girl that could fly. I think that's what that, that was. In 2015, Valiant announced that they had partnered with Sony Pictures to produce five films based on both Bloodshot and Harbinger. Bloodshot was god-awful, and it failed. The first of which was released in 2016. Chinese investment firm DMG announced a nine-figure investment into the company and its properties. Again, very much like IDW, very much like Dark Horse. It was all about chasing movie deals because, you know, I, I guess it's just not enough to publish comics these days. DMG ex, uh, exercised an option to buy Valiant out entirely, led by LA-based executive Dan Mintz. Most former Valiant executives were shown the door and set up their own new comic book publisher together, Bad Idea Comics, using a number of creators familiar to 
Valiant and then the pandemic was hard on Valiant and they had to put down their pencils. Remember that? That was that was awful for some people. Some people got to keep working. Some people actually made more money than they've ever made in comics during the pandemic. But a lot of people who are freelancing for these companies uh, were told to stop working on comics. Um, yeah, so last year they had emerged from the shutdown with a regular set of titles, fewer than before. Um, Cullen Bunn's doing some stuff. Was it, what, what publisher was out of the Cullen Bunn business? Was that DC? Um, they have Exo Man of War coming out. There are positive moves, but now nothing. Nothing. So now they're saying that, that Dynish here might, might buy back Valiant. It appears the NDA agreements are strong with Valiant. Yesterday, Blink Cool reported on major issues um, with multiple reports of layoffs and resignations. While nobody's talking to Bleeding Cool, I'm led to understand he remains with the comic book publisher. That'd be Fred Pierce. So that's one person there. Valiant is not over, but it's going through a major transition. Again, former CEO Dinesh uh, Sham Dasani, I think it's Sham Dasani, was f- forced out by the current owners, and he is apparently trying to buy it back. So there's a concern from Valiant NFT buyers of all- has also been prominent with the uh, maintenance and promised delivery of the NFTs. Um, talking again about Jim Shooter. Why don't they just hire Jim Shooter? Just hire Jim Shooter. So, uh, yeah, Dynish here is supposedly has his own comic book company, Bad Idea Comics, but he might be tempted to take Valiant back. I think if he does, he should hire Jim Shooter. I think what they need to do, and I think more comic book companies need to do this, and I, I want to bring in uh, a little bit of discussion about DC Comics and everything that's going on right now with DC Comics and with David Zaslav and this restructuring. Um, Because I I think that a lot of comic creators' careers at DC Comics are going to be cut short. Uh, I think they've been living on borrowed time and comics are kind of a luxury item, I think, for, for a company like Warner Brothers. And, you know, we've been saying for years, other YouTubers have been saying for years, uh, Ethan Van Skyver has been saying it, and he used to work for DC, uh, that there is going to come a day when whoever owns Warner Brothers or DC is going to say, you know what, it does not make sense to publish these comic books anymore, or at least not monthly. It doesn't make sense. Let's just job it out uh, to somebody else, right? And And I think we're getting close to that day. I mean, when we're seeing... David Zaslav acts movies that are almost complete, like Batgirl, you know, uh, whatever the reason is, whether it's financial or the movie is just a train wreck or yes. What makes you think he's going to gloss over the comic books? You know, we have a whole division of people pumping out comic books, but do we really need to have a comic book publisher? Why don't we just outsource the IP to somebody else? Somebody else can set up shop. They can just publish comic books a smaller business and they just pay us for the license and they can make Batman, Superman comics, Wonder Woman comics, whatever they want to do. It's on them. They pay for the license. It's on them, what they do with them. And it's not our problem anymore. You know, we've got decades and decades and decades of stories. We can strip mine and anymore. They just kind of make this stuff up whole cloth. Same story I heard at, at, uh, you know, Disney. I heard from somebody that worked with at Disney publishing worldwide about five years ago. And people said I was insane because they can't imagine a time where there wouldn't be any Marvel comics from Marvel. But Disney was actually considering jobbing out the Marvel comics to licensees because they do that with everything else. You know, Pixar and Disney and Disney princesses and every other Disney IP, they just job the comics out to somebody else and they don't have to worry about it. Then they just hire brand managers to kind of oversee the comics. And the word was that Disney was seriously considering just jobbing out Marvel Comics, especially since this was around 2016, 2017. Things were not going well for them. Uh, You know, we know the Axel Alonso story and everything went bad. And uh, I was told that they were seriously considering it because they didn't want to deal with the uh, the PR black eyes. They didn't want to deal with the dwindling sales. It just was a huge, huge mess. They were getting a lot of negative press from mainstream media outlets that Marvel was in trouble. At least the comics were in trouble in 2017. So they were going to job everything out. And uh, they tried it. They tried it with IDW. They, they kind of tested them. They gave them a couple books. They gave them Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, Captain America, whatever. And they dropped the ball. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but I think if the right publisher came along. Now, what would be really interesting uh, honestly, is if somebody like Valiant got the DC license and they put somebody like Jim Shooter in charge, 
Uh, that would be really interesting. Uh, you know, and I think if, if anything, one of these companies, whether it's a DC or Marvel, should consider at least hiring him as a consultant. We, we saw that uh, David Zaslav pulled Alan Horn out of retirement to consult on the future of the DC movies. If they were actually serious about the comic books or whoever had the license, whether it's DC or Marvel, you know, whatever's going to happen, uh, you know, find the people who were successful it's selling comics and pick their brain for God's sake, throw money at them. It's worth it. You know, find these people. Why, why is John Byrne not doing X-Men when he's doing, he's doing X-Men on his own and the X-Men he's doing as a quote unquote fan comic is infinitely better, infinitely better than what is being produced by Marvel right now. Um, in fact, uh, I had a friend of mine tell me that I think it was at San Diego that Chris Claremont was getting some jabs in about how bad the X-Men books are right now. Find the people that made the X-Men super successful, you know, who oversaw that, and, and for God's sake, just bring them in and, and see if they can't course correct, you know, before it's too late. I mean, I think it is, already is too late, basically, for, for mainstream comics, floppy comics, but at least if you're going to go down, go down fighting. Uh, I would definitely see if you couldn't bring in Jim Shooter, but uh, hopefully whatever happens with Valiant, um, you know, they have the good sense to go back to basics, to go back to what Shooter tried to do, which, you know, bring some of his editorial sensibilities to Valiant. Because what I've seen the last couple of years from Valiant is just like, what, what's this shit? This is like something that like Black Mask would put out or something. I mean, look, there's, I'm sure, a small market for books like that. But, you know, th these are potentially huge IP. I mean, Turok Dinosaur Hunter sold a shit ton of video games back in the day. You know, they were making movies of Valiant characters. They, they could turn Valiant into something huge, but you need the right people in charge. You need the right stories, and they just don't have it. Valiant just doesn't have it. And I don't know what the hell is going on, but uh, there we go, guys. Just kind of my thoughts on the whole situation. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for more comic book news. We'll talk later. Just wanted to thank Fishing Clash again for sponsoring this video. You can download the app through the link below. Remember to use gift code CLOWNFISH. We'll talk to you later.